Now that's what I call social distancing. What's going on, everybody? This is the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, the podcast for cover band musicians and band leaders to learn how to rock more and suck less. Here in Atlanta, Georgia, I am Adam Johnson. And here in Greensboro, North Carolina, banging my glasses <laughs> on my mic, <laughs> Dan Ray. So here's the thing, guys. Yeah. Um, we are doing our best to kind of like make things accessible for everybody on any particular channel. So we are live streaming and um, recording these conversations with video. Um, and what you guys, you know, we got it. We got an email uh, this week from one of our listeners that says, Hey, I'm a big fan. Um, I listen to it audio exclusively. Um, you guys should stop dicking around with all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your last episode was uh, super sucky on just audio. And you know what? Fair. Oh, that was, that was a fair Fair assessment. <laughs> I cannot argue. Not going to lie. <laughs> but for those of you who just are listening to this, let me paint you a picture with words, okay? There you go. As We're going to have to get good at that because if we're going to be doing both for both platforms, yes. we got to be prepared to, yeah. As our very talented and capable host, uh, Dan Ray, went to go introduce himself, he hit his face on the microphone. I did. I did. I got my microphone hanging from a boom here, and I fully clacked my glasses against it as I was... Knocked his glasses askew, <laughs> that was really if something. you will. Yeah, 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 askance. So we are going to do our best to make sure that those of you who are strictly listening to audio uh, get the full experience. But let me just Which means describing go ahead. my idiocy beat by let beat. Let me just go ahead and say <laughs> Dan hit his face really, really good. I did. I did. It was, it was good. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how has your week been going? Quiet. Real quiet. Yeah. I mean, uh, I will say after, I'm, I'm, I am um, blessed that I have a really great day job that I can do during the day from home in, you know, perpetuity. And um, that has been <laughs> banging on all cylinders. I mean, yeah. I, I got a major release of my product coming out that is um, fighting me. It really does not want to come out. But by God, that shit's happening. Um and, uh, you know, a little about that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my release date was Tuesday. We pushed that back to tomorrow. Today we agreed we'd push it back to Monday. Um, but I'm presenting at a virtual conference on Wednesday of next week in front of probably maybe a thousand people to talk about how great it is. So it needs to be great by then. Um, so, you know, the whole thing about like presenting in front of people is that it makes you nervous, right? And in in order to kind of like combat those nerves, you should like picture everybody in their underwear. But this is a virtual conference and like 80% of the people are going to be in their underwear. That is true. I just need to picture them as they are or just put some porn on my screen just, and it'll be just as good. No, you need, just make sure that it's a live feed and then you'll just know that they're full, in their underwear. You know what? I actually have across the room for me here in my office, I have a uh, button down shirt hanging on the doorknob yep. that I have put on for meetings. And it's yeah, been like totally. in my sweatpants and my button down shirt to meet customers. And then I take it back off. Like a damn newscaster. Like a damn newscaster. Yeah. So what are you, what are you drinking? Um, I, I have, you, well, you get... so I have a couple of things. I'm about to kill off an Odin brewing. Um, what's it called? Things left unsaid. It's a new um, uh, East coast IPA and it's quite tasty, okay. but it's almost done. And so I'm going to be replacing that with a Bell's hop slam IPA. Um, Very nice. If you're lucky, you'll hear me crack it open. I, if I forget to mute my mic, you'll hear me crack it up in a minute. So in, in our uh, neck of the woods, my favorite Mexican restaurant had closed down due to restrictions and that kind of thing. Mm. They just opened back up today. Nice. Line around like the entire situation to get their to-goes. So um, we're having Margs. Margs. And this is the last of the Margs. Okay. Now they're doing Margs to go, but we opted to go ahead and make them at home. Sure. Um, but the, the guy who, um, who owns that restaurant is a guy named Ford Fry, who is a very well-known restaurateur, um, in the Southeast. Um, so we are, we, we made the margaritas out of his cookbook, which for the record, three ounces of tequila oh. and an ounce and a half of Cointreau per margarita. That's, um, that's intense. This is margarita, uh, numero dos. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> but. I feel like I have my wits about me and I don't think it should adversely affect my performance this evening. Time will tell. (sighs) 
so yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Um, you know, we were talking about um, the software being kind of church related and running into an issue where like Easter was kind of this big thing that we were kind of rushing towards. Um, and we were thinking that this week maybe be, maybe might be kind of light and that has not been the case. Um, I actually had a, fr- a, one of my coworkers kind of, you know, DM me in Slack and was like, so much for that post uh, Easter lull. I was like, Hey man, do you want to get furloughed? Cause I don't. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the option. Fi- yeah. yeah. We're both, we're both at capacity and there's like 10 people waiting, but uh, that means we get to do it tomorrow. Right. Right. So, you know, you do have to kind of look at things uh, with a, an abundance mindset, you know, that's kind of the for aim sure. at least for sure. So. And it's easy. It's easy not to, you know, one of the things we wanted to, um, get into and and I think we're uh, maybe a topic or two away from it is is yeah. sort of how to how to hold all this stuff mentally because it's um it, it wants to be held in some ways that are not, not fantastic 100% um, yeah i mean we we are just kind of in we're in this i think we like at this point the the novelty has worn off to a degree for sure and the reality has probably set in and so it's kind of a matter of figuring out, okay, we're, this is, this is where we are kind of, you know, what do we do from here? Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of articles coming out. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are ticked off at live nation because they have kind of changed up their re- refund policy uh, about postponed shows versus canceled shows. And um, you know, it's, it's, it's a big mess. And there, there are people who are projecting that like live music in 2020 is just like done. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. I mean, that's the case. I was talking to um, Taylor, my partner from Colorado and Ray, who I, mm-hmm. she called me on the phone. I texted her, you know, we were supposed to be at Odin Brewing playing a show tonight. Yeah. Um, and I texted her, uh, you know, crying emoji about that. And um, my phone rang and it was her. And she was like, we haven't talked in a month and a half now. And I just miss your, yeah. miss your face and miss your voice. And, and as we talked about it, like, you know, even if things start to ease, even if, you know, we start to be able to go back out, will they let groups of arbitrary size gather again, yeah. but you know, before the end of the year, who, who even knows, you know, could be, could be performance. is going to be a thing that'll be curtailed for uh, hard to say. Indefinitely. How long. I mean, hard to say how long I would say. So here's me being the cockeyed optimist. Mm. Um, I have a feeling that for people who are in kind of our, like, there it is. Uh, people who are in our realm, I think we will get back to it quicker than the um, than probably the larger format artists. Um, I think in in a world um, where we are like you know if if they they open the restriction to fifty people or a hundred people, like that's that's kind of our sweet spot. Yeah, bar gigs will come back before big concerts for sure. For sure. Um, so that's something to kind of look forward to, something to be optimistic about, and I don't you know, two weeks from now, we will go back and listen to this and be like, man, we sure were <laughs> you know, wrong on this every one. Every one of our episodes has been like, remember that episode we did? It was like, oh my gosh, they're canceling all these things. Can you believe it? You know, Hey, I got something for you. Hey, Dan, remember places? Oh yeah. yeah and people like a while ago, there it's were amazing. like, there were places and you could like go to them. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. And well, so yeah, great. I, you know, I've been to some places recently, but I'm in a little, like low key terrified to be there and it's been not great. So I, you know, I got a mask. Yeah. I ordered one on Etsy. Nice. One for every member of the family. And, um, you know, we use them if we go out. I mean, I don't really, I haven't really been super social. I've gone out maybe... I think on average I'm out of the house in like a public public area, maybe like once a week, maybe. Yeah, I went out and picked up dinner um, yesterday, and the it was a restaurant we'd never been to before, but I always wanted to try them, and so I got taken yeah. from there. And um, the woman put my bag of food up on the counter, and then like put her hand out for my credit card, and I. You kind of like locked up. I did. I did. I had a moment and, and then I handed her my credit card and then she swiped it and handed it back to me. And you're doing like the, like the contagion math in your head I, to, like to, as it's happening. No, yeah. I wish I had tongs to like take them from her. Right. right. Like just carry them. I didn't. I so, stuck it back in my wallet and I um, put my wallet in my pocket like a grown human and I grabbed my yeah. food and I walked out of there. 
Yeah. So um, I'll also there that that's kind of a great example of like maybe people who aren't doing a phenomenal job mm. of handling the kind of tension in that moment. Right. Um, so there is a coffee shop by me um, called Valor Coffee. I'll shout them out. Um, my favorite coffee shop in the area, like a cool in town, like hip coffee shop in the middle of my boring suburban town. Um, they are still open and they are doing a bang up job on all fronts. Mm. So when you go, you know, I'm just a coffee guy, black coffee in a cup, like couldn't be easier. Um, they're using the square deal. So you basically use their reader. So like, and the chip reader is Bluetooth. So it, it doesn't touch anything. Right. So you walk up, you place your order, you put your card in, you take your card out. No one else touches it for anything and you get your delicious coffee and you're on your way. Now, the other thing that they did um, that I think is just absolutely genius, and I think, you know, I'm just throwing it out there, maybe this is something that you guys can utilize uh, for your bands and stuff kind of looking into the future. Um, They opted to give a limited number of unlimited memberships to their services. Hmm. So they did the math. And they decided that in order to kind of break even and kind of make money and cover cash flow and that kind of thing, that they would sell this membership where you could get unlimited coffee, anything on their menu that is coffee related for an entire year, 12 months from the purchase price or from the purchase date for 600 bucks. And it was a limited number. Um, because they probably did the math and figured that we can afford to do X, Y, and Z of this, and they sold out of them. Sure, that's great. I, you and, know, I'm watching retailers be really clever and creative and smart about that kind of thing. It's, 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 it's really phenomenal, and and it's also shown, um, just, I, I feel like, you know, social media and 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 the reality of the situation doesn't necessarily like, um it doesn't cause us to do things, but it definitely exposes people for who they truly are. Mm. Um, my friend, uh, Ryan owns a series of restaurants in my area and he is bankrolled by a guy who is, I, I've been friends with his family for years and years. The The black tailor that I, I show was a gift from this, this guy. And he's basically, he's the landlord for this whole stretch of all of these restaurants. Um, and he's a guy who is very well off and doesn't necessarily need money to function. And so he told, he's got three restaurants open and he said, you know what? We're good for the next couple of months. And in that moment, he decided that because he was given generosity to keep his facilities open, that they were going to start serving food to people who are food, um, in stable. That's great. So they are now doing um, free meals, no questions asked from 11 to four every, every weekday, um, just as a way to kind of give back to kind of show the generosity that they were, they had received back to the community. Yeah. And because they are, you know, they had to, they had to lay off a bunch of their staff. Like they're now serving the staff that worked for them and, and, and a number of other places it's really it's it's inspiring and you know um i feel kind of conflicted about it on a couple of things because like a part of me wants to get on and live stream all the time and play and you know take tips and that kind of thing but i also understand that in my situation like i'm i'm okay yeah and if i do that i'm potentially taking eyeballs and dollars and away from people who need it more than I do completely. Um, completely. And that's the only, that, that particular situation is the only reason why I feel like I would want to do that is to raise money to help those guys do what they're doing. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, I have, um, I have this Saturday, uh, thing, um, where I'm bringing on guests, um, some of whom will want to have tips of their own. And that's part of the purpose of it. And others won't. Um, the ones who don't, I am requesting donations for, there are a couple of organizations that are helping artists. Um, the Greensboro Arts Council, 
uh, at artsgreensboro.org um, is they have a artist emergency fund that mm-hmm. people can donate to and that they have a whole process for people requesting money from and uh, and it's really good. And then there's one at the state level too that I like a lot. Um, so I'm, I've been hyping those on my on my things. But, but I'm very careful to say on all of them, like I'm fine. Uh, please don't – I, I, I welcome your tips and I will certainly pay them through to – the full timers who I know are suffering right now. And I have done some of that. I've put some money back out to totally. people who, you know, um, my plan kind of is to get, um, my payday is Friday. And, uh, the, I have a policy that my um, father taught me to put 10% of every paycheck into savings. And instead of that this month, I will be putting that 10% toward some full-time musicians who I know just aren't making it right now. Yeah. So, um, I think that's really important. I think we all need to keep an ear to the ground for people who need that kind of support. And, um, um, to, you know, those of us who have the privilege at this point, just, I think it's, it, it's incumbent on, on us to, to give. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, um, did you get your, your Trump check today? Uh, I did not. I make too much. Oh, ah, yeah. well, I don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did good on you. Mm. Um, we were, yeah. N- between me and the wife, the way that we file, we were under the threshold. So, um, and part of me wants to, you know, go big, but I'm, I think we're good. We're just going to hang on to it and, sure. and try to find opportunities to, um, to save up in case things get weirder. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast, but her company, um, cut all salaried employees by 10%. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's fine. You know, in our, in our particular situation, it's not a, you know, it's not a make or break situation, but it, it does kind of affect things. Sure. Um, so I figured that like right now, um, we could use a new refrigerator and, um, man, Amber sure would like if I, you know, gave the thumbs up on that transaction, but I was like, why don't we put that in savings just for right now? Yeah. Just, just to be sure. In case things get weird. It's just real uncertain. You know, I, my, my company um, is in the real estate space and real estate is way, way suppressed right now, but they're also in the mortgage space and the low interest rates right now have mortgages fully booming. So the mortgage yeah. business units are supporting everything else. And my company actually has just started up a fund for employees who are financially affected. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, you can, you can, petition for, you know, my wife just got laid off or my husband just got laid off, you know, and, and wait, great. Dan, your wife and your husband just got laid off. I know off? they both did. It's really dire. Yeah, it's a bad situation. Um, people are going to think, people are going to think bad things about the South now because you said that. <laughs> I don't think they're going to think that bad thing about the South. <laughs> this is Tiger King all over again. I only have, I only have a hundred tigers. Well, you know, I mean, that's been the running joke is that, you know, a married couple apparently with their stimulus check can easily buy a tiger. <laughs> that's true. It covers, if, it covers the spread. You just have to sure. know where to go. And before a month ago, I did not know where to go, but now I fully do. So it's all been cleared up. Yeah. Doc Antle is my bro. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> I killed him. You got me. Anyway. Yes. Yes. Did you see that they put out a new episode? I did. I watched it last night. I watched half of it last night and then, um, um, it was very high, high end production. It was literally, it was on zoom. It was roughly as high tech as what we are doing right now. At least, except, yeah. except the difference is that everybody on that production got a free pair of I, I AirPod pros. Every one of, every one of them was on AirPods. I mean, my in-ears cost more than those AirPod pros, but yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. But like, I'll tell you this. I, in, I was doing uh, a supply apply uh, a supply run, and I lost my charger for my AirPods, and I did have to buy another one this past week. It's bad. Sixty dollars, well spent. Um, I, you know, I is I, I am a bit of an Apple fanboy. I worked for Apple. Me too. Oh, I have an. I could take. For, I'm an, I'm a fan. I could take my shirt off and show you a tattoo that shows you how dedicated to Apple I am. Goodness. Um. Should I do that? I'm not going to do that. Don't do that. Um, Don't do give that. me another margarita. Maybe I will. <laughs> but, you, but the problem is I would have to explain it in loving detail for our audio listeners. Yes. And I'm just not doing that. So Let me just say that 
on my upper right back, there is an Apple logo on my shoulder. Huh. And right. I, well, I worked for them for six years. Um, the rainbow I or just up, the flat bite? It's just black. Okay. It was that era. I left Apple, I think, in 2011. I think. Okay. 2012, maybe. Um, which was very much the just monochromatic Apple logo era. Um, and on my last day, I went out with a bunch of my coworkers, and we all went and got Apple tattoos. Awesome. And I, and I, I strategically put it on my back because Apple was behind me. Huh? Ah. Go on to the next thing. It's a ah. metaphor. You dinguses. It's a metaphor. <laughs> so you gotta learn. Yeah. Apple's behind me. Get the behind me, Apple. Uh, actually, he's you know, doing it. He's do taking this. his. Oh, say, oh, sorry. No, all no, your no, listeners. No, no. no, I'm just saying. No. You know, I've got tattoos all over me. I got, you know, all kinds of different things over here and there. I'm not going to show you my, my back. But, I am you know. uh, untattooed myself because I can't, I've, I've never found like a piece of art that I wanted to commit to that strongly. That there is, it hurts so gosh damn much. I, I, it's but, not the pain. It's the, it's the sort of lifelong commitment. Of it. But, but the longer I wait, the less life I have left to spend with that art on it. So I've gotten all the meaningful things done. So like now I just want to get like, giraffes and like balloons and stuff right on so like this was my first one is is a is all right a so for audio listeners heart. adam is pointing to his right no, 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 bicep. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna explain okay, it. on good. my bicep right, i have cool. i have a winged heart on my bicep is the first tattoo i ever got my wife drew it ah. and she's got one as well ah um i've got i've got swallows on both my ch- both sides of my chest kind of show those um both of my sons have bird middle names ah. So um, Oliver Sparrow and Elliot Swift, and th- you can't see it because they're it's way too low, and I it's not that kind of program. Um, I've got their birth dates underneath those. I've got my um, I've got the Apple logo on on that side, and then on my on the inside of my bicep six nine five. Yeah, that is the address of a venue in Atlanta called the Masquerade that got um, torn down a couple of years ago. And it's one of those just kind of punk rock clubs that like was so special. And was a very big part of like my experience that like they did a they did one last festival and they called it the Racking Ball Show <laughs> like the Racking Ball Fest <laughs> and they had a whole a whole series of um like tattoo flash and I got this for like I don't know sixty eighty bucks or whatever nice it just was appropriate nice and I am um, uh I've got these guys you can't really see these wrists I've got discipline discipline and. and f- Faith, you can't hold on. Faith, I see you're on the faith. on the inside the uh, the wrists. Yeah, yeah, yep. those sucked. I um uh, so um Justin, my co front man in the Clanky Lincolns yep. at night. Um, he has many 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 tattoos. He's got two both sleeves and uh, and it's all classic rock stuff. He's got like Slash and the um, Dark Side cover and like a bunch of stuff. Um, and a lot of Rolling Stones. And um, we had said that we were going to get. Abe, the clunky Lincoln's logo tattoo yeah. on us. And um, when we started the band, we, we said that. And his wife said, just she didn't, she didn't want him to commit to it too early. She said, wait till your hundredth show. <laughs> that's a great dude. That's a great rule. It is. I love that. It's a good rule. And, uh, and we did, we did, we have broken a hundred shows now. So um, what about this? What about on episode 100? I get the clunky Lincoln's logo tattooed on me. Cool. I'm in. No, you're in. I, I, I can't because like it's like two weeks away and there's definitely not a single tattoo shop open. No. And I don't want to get a tattoo from a person who would come to my house. You know what I mean? You know, you can order a tattoo gun online. You can. And, and that you have is children terrible. who would fully do that on you. Right, 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 right. Anywho, um, I will abruptly <laughs> Let's pivot redirect away from that, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So listen, um, one thing I want to talk about that is tech related because with yes. tech is still happening. Um I've been doing all this streaming and obviously podcasting and um, the time has come to, for me to upgrade my rig for yes. all of that. So I've been working through a kind of a no name. It has a name, but it's upside down um, right now. So I can't read it. USB mic um, that does. Okay. Yeah. It sounds yeah, all I mean, right. You sent it to me when you were like, Hey, I'm, if we're going to do this, I'll go ahead and get this mic. It's no big deal. Whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. And you were like, yeah, fine. Whatever. That's and it was fine. a yeah. $40, $60 mic, whatever. And then a, 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 a scissor boom that does okay. Yep. And, um, and that's been fine. And I sound fine. I think I sound fine. Sure. Um, but, um, what it has not allowed me to do is, um, 
any kind of mixing of acoustic guitar or electric guitar in with anything else. And, uh, I think that my, I think the sound could be better. So, um, those of you who have been, I don't know that we mentioned it out loud in words, but it's been evident to those of us participating in this thing in video for the last few weeks that Adam has a new microphone. It's the Shure ah, SM7B and it's gorgeous yes. and it is kind of the staple. It's the, it's the, you know, when you think of somebody podcasting, it's the mic they're talking into. The gold it's, standard, yeah. really. And so I have one of those coming and then I have a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 interface. Now, did you do the reverb deal? Because they were doing like 60 some odd percent off of the, the Scarlett's on their site this past week. I looked at that. It was, you um, looked at me like I had a baby's arm going out of my forehead. So I think the answer is no. The answer is no. And I, and I did look at that and, um, they did not have the third gen. They were not, they were like, they, it, oh, it wasn't was like a, it like wasn't, the current, it wasn't the current yeah. ones. Um, and the current ones have a couple of things that I want in particular loop back. So the idea would be that, um, the Scarlet, uh, 4i4, um, has the ability to take audio from the desktop over USB to the device, monitor yep. it out to your in-ears and also loop it back in to a DAW to get recorded. Um, and okay. that is important for this whole workflow that I'm sure. doing with the podcast. So, so it did need that. And, and the version two did, did, does not have that. Got it. Um, so I needed that. And then, um, I'm upgrading my boom cause this one is okay, but it, it sags during the podcast. It, I, I can't yeah. having to lift it back up. And then the, tension um nuts on it don't i can't tighten them hard enough to make it not be lame and it cost yeah. uh 20 20 bucks it was the intro version sure. of that whole thing so i have a i think it's the road pro yeah one, it's like the like the, the road yeah like yeah, it's yeah, the one. yeah yeah it's the one it's the one you want um and some cables and whatnot to make that all happen um so i'm excited about that it should all be here friday and um uh, which means it'll be out of quarantine by the end of the weekend. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be yeah, it takes what? Week. 72 something. Some odd we've hours. Been leaving them. Here's the thing. We've been leaving packages on the front porch and our front porch is pretty secure, but I don't think I'll be leaving these packages on the front porch. I That's fair. Coming to the back porch. So, yeah, I mean like my rig is so like, it's super simple. This, this is the Alesis IO2. Like they don't even make this anymore. Yeah. This was an interface that like somebody gave me because they were like, you need a thing, you pitiful loser. <laughs> um, like, if I wanted to buy this, like, I couldn't even, like, pay somebody money to give it to me. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but it's crazy because, like, the one thing about SM7s that you'll hear a lot about is that they are very low gain. You have to really, like, push them yes. to get a good sound. This is maybe a $20 interface. You're having zero issue hearing me that's true i'll tell you my sweetwater uh rep when he I, um this is what happens i place my order on sweetwater and my rep calls me within 90 he's like seconds. hey buddy yeah hey hey thanks for your order man um uh listen yeah and he did sell me a an inline um preamp a, a cloud lifter so um, you get a cloud lifter yep. there's there's like three or four of them um i feel like aventone makes one and then soyuz microphones just like introduce like their whole their whole deal. And I'm not saying like, it's not a good move. And I, I, I would more than likely benefit from owning one. Um, but like at this point I've got you sound a fine. crappy interface yeah, with a really fine. great mic and it works. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll compare and contrast when I, um, next week I'll be on that whole rig. Uh, hopefully. Will you sound more or less like Penn Jillette? Like what if you get this new mic and you're like, and from Greensboro, North Carolina, and here's the real Ray. problem. What if I get this new rig and I sound like Teller? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that'd be bad. If you don't plug it in right, maybe you will. I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But if I do magic like Teller, that'll be a, there you go. a worthwhile trade-off. So guys, listen, you know, we we do this for fun. And like, honestly, like this podcast is more or less just an exercise in, in us just like getting to socialize with human beings outside <laughs> yeah, of our yeah, house. Human contact. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that uh, has changed is like, you know, we've got, we've got, our kind of format kind of locked in to a certain degree. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but like, we're not doing promos anymore. Um, that's a little bit of a tweak due to this current situation that like um, our, our partners are, you know, choosing to kind of back off of that. But, you know, we wanted to 
the typically the way that we do this is that we spend some time kind of catching up and doing what we're doing right now. And then we kind of get into the meat of the situation. Um, past couple of weeks, we haven't been able to do that per se, because we've had, there's been interviews. no meat. Well, it's, it's not that there hasn't been meat. It's just that we've had other things going on interviews or like, you know, we tried to do the happy hour thing this right. last week. Right. And I don't think those are bad ideas necessarily, but they don't necessarily kind of cater to, the format that we're accustomed to. So we really wanted to get yeah, kind of or indeed the, the sort of the core audience, right? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, I think at times, you know, Dan and I kind of go back and forth and we're chatting and stuff. And we don't really think about like, this belongs to you guys. For the longest time, it was just me and Dan. Yep. Um, and, and this week was a great reminder for us that like, no, you know, people, people like this format. People like the show. And um, yeah, they, they don't care about it. They actually care about it. They do. Yeah. And, and they don't necessarily care when we try to deviate or we don't necessarily give it, you know, the attention or effort that it deserves. Right. So um, we wanted to really kind of, re, let's say, overcorrect from last week um, and, and have a particular topic that we wanted to talk about this uh, for this episode. Um, we are getting very close to 100. And I think... I guess this is a weird foreshadowing, but I think we're going to skip episode 100. Yeah, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. <laughs> Which sounds so No, weird. I love it. I lo I'm so happy about this. Because listen, here's the thing. The fact is, podcast <laughs> listenership is way, way, way down so, globally. It's way so down, down. It's you guys. desperately down. And um, we're coming up on this milestone. And I've been, I don't know, we haven't really talked about it, Adam, but um, I've had this little sort of jangle of sadness that um, our hundredth episode is going to go out into the ether and, you know, only the re real diehards are going to hear it um, yeah. and it'll be lost forever. And, uh, and we just, uh, so the, the thinking then is we're going to go from 99 to 101. Yes. And we'll come back to a hundred, we'll come yes. back to a hundred. It'll be like the triumphant return. It'll be like the coming out party, uh, that we're all waiting for. hundred percent. So that is the plan right now. And this is, um, um, uh, unorthodox, but we are in unnavigated waters. And so it's true. That's, that's our deal. So if, you know, if you, if you're looking through your feed and you see 99 and then 101, uh, do not adjust your, uh, television sets. Not that is accident. by design. Yep. Yep. But we will make sure that you, uh, that you understand that episode 100 is, uh, worth the wait. Hmm. Very special. And and we it's it's honestly been in the planning stages for months and we, we wanted to make it special and so we are going to hold off on doing it. Yep. Even if it means that it's completely out of order and we're like episode <laughs> one eighteen and then we <laughs> go back to one hundred. You know, and but here's um, the thing, like five years from now there are gonna be so many things that'll be like, well, coronavirus. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like it's all gonna make sense because Hey, look, it was the war, you know, like how many times did my grandma tell me that? Yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, with that out of the way, no commercial break, no retread. Um, let's talk about how you're doing. Yeah. You know, because, you know, we, we said, a, we talked about it earlier. Um, the novelty's worn off. The reality is set in. How you doing? Um, you know, everybody's in kind of different situations. Dan and I kind of are in a similar situation. Um, we both have jobs that are still busy and, um, you know, we're not necessarily currently looking at any sort of downturn in our, um, our nine to five work, but, um, and we've got kids at home. I'm dealing with like homeschooling. Totally. Uh, oh. so like, there's a lot of guys who have looked at this and like, Hey, this is a great opportunity. And I have all this time to kind of get into all of these different endeavors. You know, my day to day hasn't really changed very much other than I'm losing the, let's say 37 minutes that I would normally get to myself right. <laughs> between work and back. Yeah. Um, other than that, everything's basically the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I, I, um, in a way, I feel very privileged about that. In a way, I feel like I'm kind of missing out on the experience because so many people are like sitting at home twiddling their thumbs and that's a big part of what this moment of life is for for them. So yeah, um, I know it's, it is the height of privilege to wish that I had 
nothing to do, but right. <laughs> but there is like something about that. I was talking to um you know, my partner Taylor in Cold Iron Ray, who who um her boyfriend goes off and manages a restaurant that's still open doing takeout for most of the hours of the day and she sits at home alone and it's not great. And um yeah. You know, we're we're lucky enough to not have empty hours like that, and and um, and even if we did, we'd have children all over us. So yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, in my case, I've got some creative things that like I normally wouldn't have time for to kind of either move around or kind of delegate, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm at right now. Um, we just did the, we just, we shot and recorded all of the content for this My Sharona kind of mini vid um, that should be out in the next couple of days. Um, I used my mic to do all of the vocals Sweet. and, um, you know, recorded some guitar uh, and then shot with the Roland, which is gone. Woo. Bye bye. As long as it shows up in one piece and the guy's happy with it, you know, I won't have to worry about that anymore. Nice. Uh, but um we've got lo- we've got audio for um all three bands that needs uh studio time um i did finally send all these sessions over to our guitar player um who hasn't been working with us a whole lot because he's been busy and had some other personal stuff going on but um with the sale of that guitar and then kind of the stimulus check coming in i've got a little bit of margin to be able to pay him for his time um which means it will get done and it will get done well. And I won't have to try and carve time out to do that, uh, which is good for me. Um, and just trying to find like pockets of time where I can dedicate for those things that whenever this kicks back off, you know, we, we can do what we need to do, you know, moving forward. Um, but outside of that, it's just kind of the, the monotony of it. So like I said, like I haven't really, I haven't left my house in three, four days yeah. and it'll be another three or four days before I leave again. And just trying to find the, I mean, this is really kind of a talk about like mental health, self-care, that kind of thing. And we've done, we kind of touched on these in other episodes, um, but this is kind of more of a, um, it's a bit of a different conversation because um it's much more widespread and it's not just you know i'm so busy i'm sad it's like yeah Yeah. you know i mean that's kind of been where how it has been up to this point yeah Um, well i mean the irony of course is that it revealed to us um i'm so busy i'm sad i'm so not busy i'm sad well maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the busy right maybe i'm I'm just yeah maybe i'm just sad i'm so busy i can't get anything done well, I'm sitting around the house and I'm still not getting like maybe maybe there's just something to deal with about procrastination for me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's um the the thing about the thing about this is that it's going to reveal a lot of um truths about us personally and about us as a culture and about us as a country that uh may not all be very pleasant truths. And um so getting through that is like part of what the conversation is. Yeah, I will say for 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 me and for um the people I've been interacting with, the the hardest thing about this is the the pull to not just accept it the way it is, yeah, right. But to to instead sit in like I wish it was different. I wish it was some other like well, how come it has to be like this? I yeah. know it has to be like this, but I hate it. Um, yeah. Versus like, yeah, this is this is how this is. This is how this is. This is how this is going. And, uh, um, you know, it, none of us did anything to bring it upon ourselves. Uh, and complaining about it on Facebook makes no difference about it whatsoever. And, um, you know, I, I, I have spent a lot of the, 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 the nature of the personal work I've done in my life has mostly been around accepting what's so. Yeah. And, uh, the, this has been a real challenge to that for me. This has been a real, and, and for the people around me, this is like, how come it has to be like this is, is like the question that is most causing us pain right now, I think. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, there was there was a period of time where we could kind of be like, all right, this is just a temporary deal and we can kind of work around it and it's not going to affect this and this, you know, I mean, a month ago I was talking about, oh, we got this gig at the end of March. Like it'll probably sure. happen. Yeah. You know, and it feels so crass to kind of think about that mindset now. But like in the grand scheme of things, like those are things that don't necessarily affect me other than my own just kind of selfish ambition or the, like you were saying, like the thing that feeds the part of me that needs to play shows. Yep. Um, you know, for a, some of the guys in my group, it's taking money out of their pockets. It's taking food out of their pantries. Like it's, it's yeah. more, it's much more serious. Yeah. Um, and it, that's kind of why like that, that gig that I had that got canceled where I still got paid. I, 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 I gave that money away right. um, without really any hesitation because I knew, I guess maybe kind of cynically at that moment that like, this probably isn't going to be a short term thing. Right. And I need to do this just while I can and I have the means and it's not, it doesn't hurt. So I'm going to continue to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point, there's the whole, like, I sure would love to play in front of people and I would sure love to get the validation that I get out of being a person who does that. Um, but I don't, I, there's a, there's a part of me that feels guilty for feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And that because I don't need it other than for my own kind of selfish, whatever, just ambition or drive or whatever, I, I don't need to do it. Right. And so that's kind of kept me from doing it more. Um, and maybe that changes and maybe I do one every now and then just to kind of, you know, keep things fresh. Um, I've been trying to maybe pour it into doing like YouTube content and kind of doing it in a way that doesn't necessarily take eyeballs away from people who need it. Cause basically like this current situation is like every band is now playing in the same club yeah. for the same people. But it's a massive club. It's an enormous it's the club. Biggest, it's the biggest club in the world, but like there's only so many rooms that you can go into yeah, yeah. and maybe you don't need, you don't need the eyeballs as much as the next person does, you know? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you know, how I've solved that for myself is to have the eyeballs that I'm taking funnel towards something that makes a difference for people. Totally. Right? So, and, and I will tell you, I'm, I'm, I have no shame at all in the fact that, um, I, <sighs> A big part of me lives inside performance. Sure. A big part of who I am lives inside performance. Yeah. And um, to think that I wouldn't be um, able to play a song and look up and see that I have 30 people live streaming me on Facebook, like that is – first of all, that's a that's a shallow, pale shadow of having a room full of people screaming. But yeah. – it's a damn sight better than nothing. And, um, and I leave those shows on Saturday with that, that part of me alive. Um, and, and it's, and it's great. And, and I, and I'm glad that I'm able to, to funnel the resources that generates into something that's worthwhile, you know? So yeah. I would, I would, I would, my, my recommendation would be to find a way to do that. Don't, don't deny yourself you know, again, like it, it, it's just, it, it's just, uh, we, we need that. We do need that. There's a reason we're here. We're re there's a reason we're these people doing this is that we do need that. We do need that. We do need it. And it's yeah. not, you know, weak of us to need that. We, we actually, that's just who we are. Uh, maybe it's weak of us. I don't know that it is. Yeah. I think it's just, I think it's just how we're wired. And no, I mean, yeah, I mean it is, but it, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's not weak of us. Well, I mean, it's not, you know, there's, there's like validation. Yes. There's the validation part of it maybe isn't all that healthy, but for me, it's the connection part of it. It's, it's the sure. most important thing. Yeah. And, and I think, um, certainly the feedback I've always gotten when I played live is that I was giving as good as I got in those sure. moments. Right. So that's, that's what the, that's what the thing is. You know, I did a, um, I think I mentioned it last week. I did a live stream with, um, with some of my regulars from the karaoke show. 
and on Zoom so that they they couldn't sing along with me because that's the physics gets it all screwed up. But yes, uh, but like I could finish a song and they could come off mute and go woo, and it was <laughs> almost as good as actually being in a room with them. Yeah. Um. So I, I really just recommend everybody listening find a way to do that because it's important to us. It's the, it's it's part it's the creature that we are. We're just we're we're built for that and trying to deny that. I think I think is yeah, I don't think that's real healthy. I think we should find a way to feed that part of us because it's important and also have that feed what the community needs and the, you know, people who really need that, um, the financial support of it needs. I, I, I said to a friend of mine who's a full-timer, um, I've always been kind of a little jealous of those guys, like that they're that committed, that they're all in about it. And, and yeah. I'm suddenly not, I'm real glad for where I am and I'm glad that yeah. I can, um, that I can contribute because I, I have the opportunity to. And so, um, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, we, we had been back and forth and in, in that moment, like where things started to kind of show their, their themselves. I was like, I mean, I really think that like this podcast is meaningful and that like between the podcast and the YouTube channel and like all of these things, like it could be a thing that yeah. like sustains. Yeah. But man, I'm really glad I got my boring <laughs> no kidding. nine to five. Oh, no you know? kidding. Yeah. And it, it, it's that weird kind of guilt. You feel guilty because you are yeah. okay for the time being. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, pity party aside, a couple of things that I thought have been kind of cool, cool ideas and things that you can do, like kind of to your point. Um, I'm going to shout out Tom Blair, who is a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find him on Blair Out Loud. Blair Out Loud. Um, he's been doing social distancing concerts in his neighborhood. So he lives uh, on the end of a cul-de-sac. So he just sets up his situation at the end of the cul-de-sac. And then everybody can sit in their yards. Fun. And listen to him do his thing. And they can Venmo and PayPal his tips. Cool. And so... Everybody kind of gets that social moment, that connection, that it's great. thing it's great. without getting all in everybody's faces. And, and there's simply a couple of times where I've like thought about, oh, what the hell? I'll just put an extension cord out at the end of the driveway, do something on a weekend. Um, and that may still very well happen. But um, I, Tom is just one of my favorite human beings. He's period. so great on Facebook. I, I would love to meet him in person. He he's he's such a talented guy, but he's got the best heart mm. out of like anybody I know. That's great. So um if you aren't following Tom, please follow him at Blair Out Loud on all of all major social media channels. He's he's a great dude. Um but outside of like music stuff, like what's working for you, Dan? Like what is it what what are things that you're doing to kind of like keep your sanity, kind of keep you grounded, keep you centered? Like what are, what's working for you right sure. now? Sure. Well a few things. Um we take a family walk after dinner every night. It's not Love negotiable. That. We're doing that. And um what's cool is my neighborhood is out. You know, you can have to do like the social distancing dance, walking down the sidewalk with each other, but um people are out and they're glad to see ya and waving at each other and stop and chat and yeah. Because everybody's <laughs> brutally lonely at this yeah. moment in time. Um, the other thing, you know, I have a six year old little girl and, um, uh, over last weekend we, uh, exposed her for the very first time to episodes four, five, and six of star Wars. Yeah. And she, um, it was good. It was good. I, I, she was already spoiled for the big reveal of, of, uh, uh, empire, but, um, but the somewhat smaller reveal of Jedi, she was not yet spoiled for. And she figured Ooh, out. She was like nice. slightly ahead of it and very proud of herself. Um, I think the bad news is that we'll be doing one, two, and three this weekend. Womp, um, womp. Uh, and I really hoped that we could avoid one because she is a little mimic and she's going to be jar jarring all over my house for the next month. Misa, so That's annoyed by what worst, you have say. The worst, the worst. <laughs> but, you know, but so to, to sort of back up from that, like a big part of my emotional and mental survival has been about connecting with my kid. And she's, she's, um, um, she's just like me, you know, when she's struggling, she's not going to admit it. She'll be fine at all costs. Um, you know, which I, I don't know anything about that. Um, she, uh, um, uh, doesn't understand quite what's happening, but it sure feels like being punished. And, uh, and it's hard. We've had some really great, great talks. Like, to, to, to be able to say to your six-year-old, like, look, yeah, I'm, 
I'm frustrated and sad and scared and I'm ready for this to be done and it can't be done. And I'm mad about that. And, um, to sort of let them in on a kid appropriate version of honesty of how you're doing has been, um, uh, our relationship, my relationship with her is, is in a whole new way. Um, it's great. out of, out of all this having happened. And, um, yeah. And, and, um, and she's a bonkers and she's six and she, you know, comes galloping into my room with a cut out dragon made out of cardboard and says, this is for you, daddy. And thanks. And she, and she leaves, <laughs> you know, she's, um, she's bouncing off the walls cause that's what we're all doing, but she's six. Yeah. So she has a ton of energy to do it with, yeah. which I know you have no idea about. Um, and, um, so that, that's been really great. Like being able to connect, um, with my family a little, a little more than, than ever before, um, has challenges, but has, a lot going for it too. So, yeah, one of the things I do enjoy is that, you know, when one of the things that I think has been a real blessing in the midst of all this is that the weather in our part of the country has been really just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so we've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time outside and a lot of times on my lunch hour, um, we just go for a walk. Mm. So we'll just go, we'll eat something, we'll go for a little bit of a walk. Um, they, we had a playground, we have a playground in our neighborhood. They closed it down, sure. which is, really sucks. Um, cause that was what we would do. We would take a walk and then let them lose. Um, but like, um, my youngest just turned five this past week. Yeah. And, um, that's really tough because, you know, six, you can kind of be a bit more honest than you can with a five-year-old right. who doesn't understand. He was supposed to go to the beach for his birthday cause it was supposed to be spring break. He was supposed to have a party. He was supposed to have all these people come over. And um, my family and my, I'm not going to get too choked up about it, but like, they did like the drive by honk the horn mm-hmm. kind of, you know, yeah, birthday parade. Um, and just trying to make the best of that situation for someone who doesn't, who doesn't get <laughs> why everything is so stupid right now yeah um that's been that's been a cool moment because otherwise we wouldn't get those opportunities to have those conversations yep (sighs) but outside of that you know um for me happy hour starts at 3 p.m totally (laughs) that's been kind of helpful um and then I've been getting up early before everybody gets up and um, got back into doing yoga because haven't really had a chance to, you know, can't go to a gym and I, I hate running with the fire of a thousand suns <laughs> um, and found this really great yoga s- series on YouTube. Um, it's like 30 minutes and it's just kind of a good way to start your day get the blood pumping, yeah, um, yeah. you know, get your rings closed and that whole thing. Um, and then also the calm app, which I've talked about multiple times with like the bedtime stories. They also have, um, they have like what they call a daily calm, which is like a 10 minute kind of meditation practice. So what I do is I get up around five thirty, five forty five, go and do the yoga for 30 minutes or so. Then, um, do kind of 10 minutes of like, let's set the day and kind of get that whole process going. Um, and I've really kind of locked into that routine maybe over the past two weeks. Mm. Um, but it's made a big difference, um, in just kind of feeling like, all right, I'm getting up. I've got things to accomplish. I've got stuff to do, um, before the kids get up and before coffee needs to be made and before we have to start doing homeschooling and all of that stuff. So, um, those have both been things that have been super helpful. Um, and then also just kind of like general rules, like no drinking after eight, um, doing things like taking CBD or melatonin just to kind of like wind down and just kind of general, try and find ways to drink more water and get more exercise and just kind of like have goals for the day, you know? Though getting into a routine that not only kind of gets the whole family across the finish line, but also like 
gives me, you know, things to check off totally. and feel good about. Totally. Yeah, no, I, I, think a, I think a routine is really important. Um, I will say I, I, um, in principle, I love running. <laughs> I ran a half marathon several years ago. Um, I haven't done it at all. And I totally told myself that this would be my opportunity. So, um, and I've done nothing about that. So, uh, yeah. so, uh, that's something I should take on. Yeah. I mean, if anybody wants, uh, the link or, you know, more information about the program that I'm on, it's like a 30 day deal. Um, and it's perfectly doable for anybody on any level. Um, my goal is just to get back to like being able to touch my toes because I can't still <laughs> right now. Right. Um, and yoga is just one of those things that um, I don't necessarily like it, but I, I also just kind of love what it does for me. Sure. It's one of those things that like, it is kind of like a mental, there's a mental component to it that I totally respect. Um, and the fact that it literally takes no equipment and right. very little space yeah. makes it kind of a complete no brainer for this particular situation. Yeah. Um, as much as I would love to get back into a CrossFit gym and like have a bunch of weight to throw around, I've got like a kettlebell and two 10 pound weights and a yoga mat. And that's what I've got. So it I'm works. just trying to make the mess of it. Yeah, it works. And then trying to play guitar whenever I can, I, um, we rearranged my office area. Amber has painted the entire interior of the house, basically. Nice. Um, and the office has been completely reconfigured. Uh, I ordered a couple of guitar stands, like the wall hangers from uh, American Musical Supply, mm -hmm. or Musician's Friend, or I can't remember which one. Uh, they should be in later this week, and then I'll have a place to put the Taylor and I think the Explorer for right now. Great. Just right around my yeah. Like between my desk. I think. That oh, that's the best. I will tell you my, I, I have two of those hanging right here next to my desk. And, uh, whenever I have an idea, I can literally, literally reach up without leaving my chair yeah. and grab a guitar. It's pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we've, we're, we're getting the house back to order. Amber has literally, she's run out of rooms to paint. I have so some I for think, her. I, I think I, we, we're can, done. we can vacate. No, listen, here's the thing. Bring her up here. We will social distance from her. <laughs> while she's doing that and she could just paint our house. I think it's perfect. Um, the next thing is that we've got this old dresser that we've been using for like storage and like bar. Uh, and I'm literally like the next goal is to like convert it to a proper bar. So like take the shelving out, put, um, put doors in sh like stemware. Awesome. Like whatever those things are called, like racks and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, no, I think projects are really important right now. Yeah. Really important. We redid the deck. We redid the living room, the office, the kitchen, the uh, TV room slash playroom for the yeah. kids. Yeah. Like we've rearranged damn near everything. I've replaced three flipping ceiling fans. <laughs> <laughs> we've done a lot. Yeah. And um, God bless my wife for being the motivating person that she is because it's definitely not in my wheelhouse. But, um, the house feels great. It's kind of nice to like, you can also, Oh yeah, it looks nice. That's good. We did a good job. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, well, we're making it I, through, you know, whatever it takes. Yeah. We have no and, option. So we got to make right. it through. And it, you know, I mean, at this point we've, we've done most of the things that we can do. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about self-improvement, and, you know, maybe it's not music related right now. Maybe it's not creative. Maybe it's just personal. Maybe it's just like trying to get, you know, what's going on between your ears. Well, and I'll say early on in all this mess, um, it, we, we were among the people who said, oh, use this time to improve yourself. And uh, I don't know. At this point, I'm like, whatever you got to do to make it through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like the yoga thing isn't like, I definitely am putting weight on. Oh, like oh. I can no, I put my, on my COVID-19 for sure. A hundred percent. Um, it's more of let's put some muscle around whatever the hell's I'm, I'm doing on top of that. But also, you know, I got like my green drinks that I drink in the morning, nice. like, and you know, after I have my coffee, Yeah, I'm doing my, like, that's my intermittent fasting excuse. Like, I'm like, Oh, I won't, I'll just eat at lunchtime. But then I have like 
we had like pork fried rice for lunch and then I had Mexican for dinner. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm getting up in the morning before everybody else and I'm working out. So yeah. screw you guys. Yeah. And look, you know? we'll, we will confront whatever's left when we can come <laughs> blinking. We out will, we light. will buy new stage clothes whenever the <laughs> hell right, we right. get to that's play right. out again. Right. You know, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If it takes me six more months to fit back into my pants, that's how that's going. I tell you. Yeah. All right, man. There you go. That was a good one. Yeah, I think I think the, the I think the live streaming video component I think is beneficial. I think it adds something. I do. I think it I think it increases the quality of the conversation. Yes, and at least the interaction. Yes. So, yes. Um, we'll continue to do that as long as it's not a major distraction for people. Um, but I I don't think it it got in the way tonight today yeah this, i think this week i think we've i think we've come back to the audio form in an enhanced way i'm for it thumbs up physically in the world Visi- for those of you visibly who visibly if you can two see thumbs up yes but they're up and yes. we're putting them up that's what we're doing guys and gals um thank you for hanging in there with us i know that it's hard to listen to podcasts when you don't have a gym to go to and you don't have a job to drive to, um, but you're still there. We still are, you know, we've got hundreds of people tuning in every single week um, to hear us talk about whatever the hell we come up with. (laughs) This, yeah. You know, and, um, you know, words, words kind of fail to uh, describe how grateful we are for each of you guys. Um, And we, uh, I mean, hitting a hundred episodes was like, it's always been like the thing, like maybe that hits some level of legitimacy. I feel like when we hit 50, like things change. I don't know yep. what's going to happen on yep. the other side of a hundred, but, um, you know, it, it, it feels significant. And at the same time, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it feels kind of pointless, but it's so much fun. Yeah. The people that we've met and the conversations we've had and the things that we've learned has have been so crazy over the past two years that um i don't see us stopping anytime soon nope uh there's really no reason to do that so we're we're not gonna with that in mind um from the bottom of our hearts thanks again hope you're doing well um if you need anything if you have any questions if you just want to (laughs) vent hit us up on uh hit us up on facebook on instagram uh cover being confidential at gmail.com uh things are a little quiet so if you want to hear us talk about something in particular send us an email yeah because we will talk about it for sure um all that being said uh i hope you guys have a great week from atlanta georgia i'm adam johnson from greensboro north carolina i'm dan ray You have been listening to the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, episode 98. Have a good week. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. If you want to help us, be sure to share us with your friends, follow us on social media, and if you haven't already, please leave a review for us on the podcast platform of your choice. Facebook.com slash Coverband Confidential, Instagram at Coverband Confidential, and Twitter at Coverband Confid. If you have any questions, please email us at CoverbandConfidential at gmail.com and consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Coverband Confidential. And for more info, check out www.coverbandconfidential.com.